Well, it's Marilyn Wilson here today. Nice to see all of you here on Coffee Chat number I don't even know. We've been at this now for several months, and I know some of you have come with us every day. I see Tim and Mary and Philip and TZ and Cindy Dahl. Thanks, Cindy, for being here. Lots of people that come in regularly, so I appreciate that, and I hope that means that these are being helpful, but we've got a, an interesting and a different topic that we haven't yet talked about today. Um, get more done by leveraging virtual assistants. I think we all want to get more done, and we would all love to have assistants, right? So Brian Bowles here is uh, CEO and founder of Transactly. He's going to tell us some ways that we might actually be able to do that in a way that's pretty affordable. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's jump in. So first I wanted to just remind everybody, if you have a question, um, hi, Dennis, nice to see you too. I don't actually see you, but I, to your point. But anyway, if you want to ask us a question, just go to that little blue box or bar that says questions, click on that little gray um, triangle, open it up, and then ask us anything. Brian's got, he's a wealth of knowledge about ways to run your business more efficiently and more profitably. So jump in with any topic of something that might make sense. So let me officially, oops, before we go there, let me intro, officially introduce him. Brandon Bowles is the um, the founder and CEO of Transactly. Uh, he, Brian, it's Brian, isn't it? Brian, is he, yeah, Brian. Uh, Brian. He's branded on here. Sorry about that. I thought it was Brian. Um, he's been at this now for how many years, Brian? You've been doing this for quite some time, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been in the real estate industry since 2007. I've ran a brokerage property management company, a couple of other small startups, and Transactly we launched in 2018. So, oh, gotcha. So this is this is a relatively new adventure, but it sounds like it's born out of real world experience. And uh, just Brian just told me, that, yeah. yeah, that he's been in just recently joined the NAR Reach program. Um, for any of you that have not yet looked at the NIR reach program there's a wealth of really really cool technology companies in there in fact we we talked to the right tools right now group if you as some of you might remember a, a few weeks ago um so we might have even seen some of your stuff in there brian but thank you for coming i really appreciate it um yeah. so let's just jump in tell me what is transactly how does it streamline and simplify real estate transactions for us yeah maybe i can step back and just give you a little background too and that'll be helpful Okay. Um, so we, we launched as a company to help focus on agent productivity, allowing them to um, streamline a lot of what they do from the contract to close process. So when we launched in 2018, we were initially just intending to be a technology solution, right? Something that agents could use to really manage their tasks and then collaborate with their team and the other people in a transaction, something that was more in line with agent needs as opposed to some of the transaction management systems that are more top down. They're focused on, you know, brokerages requiring agents to turn things in. So the funny thing is, is we launched and, and then quickly found out that agents just didn't want another piece of technology to use. What they actually wanted was people to do it for them. So we uh, gathered some more feedback, did some more market research, and then found out, okay, transaction coordinators are really the crux of this. And so if we provided those people at backed by our technology, would that help? And after a few tests, we found that it, it significantly helped out. I mean, saved significant time, up to 16 hours per transaction. Wow. Um, gained a lot of demand going into 2019, and we've just kind of scaled up and found that doing this nationwide is something that agents want. So what we are is a platform where agents teams and brokerages can use transactly to either manage and coordinate transactions themselves or hire one of our tech enabled coordinators to do those things for them gotcha so this isn't it isn't directly like a sky slope or giant transaction desk this is really high service that's the difference this is about humans helping you get your transactions done qu quickly correctly and efficiently exactly that's what the majority of people come to us for Gotcha. Think of, um, in, in terms of like the dot loops and sky slopes and so forth, those are more, I would say, back end, we're more front end, you know, gotcha. so whether you're doing it yourself, in more times, it's using one of our tech enabled coordinators, we gather everything that's needed, deal with the paperwork, manage all that minutia in our application, and then we go and enter that into whatever back office system you're required to use as an agent. So you take all the all the fun out of real estate, all the things that we all love to do, <laughs> do that paperwork, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yep. Usually, why realtors become realtors is for the paperwork, right, guys? <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Well, let's jump in and let, let's explain more about what you do. I, I'm really interested in explaining the different types of virtual assistants because that's kind of a generic word. So I think this is really helpful to help us understand what yeah, types of we get. Yeah, so, so I thought it would be helpful just because we have a lot of people, you know, we find a lot of agents, they get really busy and they're like, I just need an assistant. So mm -hmm. what you need to think about first is what type of assistant, and there's typically three types, and they're all virtual right now with COVID. And I think going forward, that will remain the case uh, with most people. So you have transaction coordinators, you have sales assistants, and then you have just general assistants or general administ admin, admin assistants. So the coordinators are managing all those contract closed tasks, so all the basic facilitative repetitive tasks and communication. You know, your sales a a assistants are warming leads, maybe even doing cold calls. And then your general assistants are kind of like a personal assistant. You might have them be as like a jack of all trades. Um, so if you go to the next slide, I can kind of go through the pros and cons of each one of these. Okay. Um, so transaction coordinators, just the main thing here is that they're highly specialized in the contract to close process. So they're dealing with all the paperwork and they ensure that your deals stay on track, significantly help with compliance and accuracy to make sure that essentially once you have that deal flow, once your transactions are rolling, essentially to keep the wheels on the bus, right? So that you keep moving forward. Um, but there's some downsides, like they're not a personal assistant. They don't nurture leads. And that's where there is some confusion when people hire a coordinator. Um, and then taking a look at sales assistants. So one of the big pluses is that they do keep your sales pipeline full. You know, I would let me just go off on a tangent here. Say the challenge is, is finding the right sales assistant. You hire a poor sales assistant, it could be, and this goes across the board with all of them, it could be very, very costly, right? Because you could be spending a fortune on leads and find out that, you know, with that assistant, only a fraction of them are getting closed compared to when you're doing them. Um, and they can just ensure generally another big pro is that as we get busy as agents, you know, our our follow-ups fall off. And this these type of people generally help with that follow-up, you know, nurturing your SOI and so forth. Um, some of the cons are, as I kind of mentioned, kind of mentioned earlier, they're not you. So they're not going to sell as well as you. That's just it will never be the case. If you do, you've got extremely lucky. Um, and then they're generally not a personal assistant as well here, right? So having them try to jump in and do transaction coordination can it end up being something disastrous. We find that most people that are really great at sales aren't really great at, you know, the high details in organization. Those are typically two different personality types. Um, and then we have the general assistant. A lot of people tend to just jump here first because they're not sure what to do. And and, you know, it, when I was an agent, this is what I did in the very beginning. It was like, I just need someone to help me. So this helps because then you could just start throwing things at that person, right? But the problem with that is, and, and they can do a lot of things, and those are the pros, but the con is, is that there's no specialization there. They're not going to be very efficient as a result of that. And it just ends up being more for you to manage, you know, because you can't put that in a box. You can't scale that. Um, right. So you... So you would probably start what well, we'll talk about that, but with just to, to clarify too. So a transaction coordinator, they're going to work on making sure your forms are correct and making sure if you everything you need to get to the broker. They're going to they're going to help you with all of that stuff. The sales assistant might more likely work with maybe like your CRM system or some of your marketing solutions, things like that. Is that what you would envision with the, that type of a person? That's exactly right. Yep. So sales assistant will be working with your lead sources and your CRM, right? And yeah, the transaction coordinator will be working with whatever uh, paperwork system you might use. So it might be zip forms and we're working with maybe transaction desk on the back end, but we're working with any number of those systems to help with the transactional items. So I would love to ask the audience, how many of you today have some sort of assistance? And if so, where did they specialize relative to these ideas of general assistant, sales or marketing assistant, and then transaction coordinator? Love to hear how many of you um, have done that. Um, and actually, I guess we can ask this question here. So one of the things, when, when I think of transaction coordinators, a lot of times I think about something that a broker brings in, right? And a lot of times they at least used to be live people, right? Yeah. Um, but if I'm an individual agent, is there sort of a minimum level of business that 
I need to be doing to make these kinds of things make sense? Or how, how would I decide it's time for me to, to work with a, an online transaction coordinator? Um, I would decide at the point of whether you enjoy doing the paperwork and if you feel that that's the best use of your time. You know, like salespeople in general typically should be spending time selling, not chasing down paperwork tasks, et cetera. So to answer your question more directly, I mean, we have clients across the spectrum. Uh, okay. Those that have only done just a handful of transactions in their career so far and are ready to start scaling up so they use us to save the time on the transaction tasks so they can begin focusing on their their leads their soi and so forth and then we have those that are um, multi-member teams where we plug into their existing team and help out I, the only thing that i would say when it's not ideal to use this is in your first few transactions i think it's important for you to get in there and really learn how to do these things yourself so you have a basic understanding that when you're delegating these things you also have an idea of what's going on behind the scenes and what they're doing. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So let's let's talk about this typical path. This is interesting too. So like yes. if if I was going to try to bring someone in to help me out, in what order would I do it and why? That's a really helpful question, I think. Yeah, this is where I'm you know, where I've had a misstep and I think where a lot of people do, your natural reaction is like, if I want more sales, I'm gonna hire a sales assistant. If I'm drowning, I need to hire just an assistant to help me out really what you need first is a transaction coordinator. Um, and I'll give you an example. Like if you, well, I have a saying here, like if you don't have a transaction coordinator, then you are the transaction coordinator. So if you wanna boost your sales and let's say you decide to hire a sales assistant first, what's gonna happen is, yeah, you'll fill up your pipeline and then the next thing you know, you're spending more time chasing down paperwork, right? Uh, so it's better to have that coordinator in place first so that you have the ability to scale up so that you can then still take the time for you to be selling because you're going to have the highest closing ratio on those leads, you know, converting leads to clients. So mm -hmm. get that in place. That's your foundation. Then once you have that ability to scale and handle that volume, hire the, hire the sales assistant, get that pipeline up. And then after that, then I think it's reasonable to start hiring a general assistant because at that point, you'll start identifying potential gaps across your team and that person can step mm -hmm. in and help out or help you with other general things that you might need help with. But it's it's important to have these highly specialized roles first. Well, it's interesting too, because we've talked a lot on Coffee Chats about, um, and it's kind of like what you were saying with someone that's new, like you want to learn how the process works before you you throw it to somebody, but even with processing transactions. We've talked a lot about getting your own client relationship management system in place, um, you know, or those types of tools, some of the other marketing tools in place, and really not necessarily doing that all themselves, because we've, we've actually talked to a lot of companies that can really help and do it for you, but get comfortable with that. Understand what works, what doesn't, um, what, what level of payment, or, you know, sorry, my phone is not having fun right now. Um, you know what what makes sense what works for your business what helps you build your business and then then you would go to the transaction coordinator because you built your business and then eventually you might come back to a sales assistant if your business really explodes is that is that yeah kind of the right yeah i would totally agree with that like having a crm is absolutely important i mean that's day number one as a salesperson in anything especially real estate having that crm in place as a tool you know, that mm -hmm. gets you going, allows you to keep track of your leads, et cetera. Then once you start having a few transactions under your belt, or maybe several at, at any given time, that's where you're going to feel some pain where you're wasting a ton of time just chasing paperwork, scheduling inspections, and that's where you need a transaction coordinator. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I think that's good to clarify because I think you're right. I mean, even when I think about a system, I just, well, just get someone that can do a bunch of stuff, right? Then that may not be the best use, especially someone that's not detail oriented enough, like the transaction coordinators that I'm sure you've you've nurtured. Yeah, so yeah what it's do a, it's, they? Do? Yeah, yeah, it's a general <laughs> knee jerk. I, I think the challenge with general assistants is they don't scale. You know, with with coordinators and sales assistants, those roles scale. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so coordinators. I mean, they're I can go down this list here, but just anything that you do from contract to close that doesn't mm -hmm. require negotiations we can pretty much handle as long as it doesn't have to do with like marketing and sales activity so 
That means once the deal's under contract, and we do things up, upon front too, like we do listing coordination. So I can start there. Okay. If once you have a listing agreement signed, we can coordinate photographers, you know, and have um, help with entering that listing into the MLS and then any kind of amendments or anything that are needed in paperwork. Once the deal goes under contract, that's when transaction coordination comes into place. And that's the bulk of our work. So once the deal's in place, we're going to review that contract, make sure all the pages are there, you know, fields are filled out like you and your broker would like them to be. Anything that's missing, we chase it down. We send them for signatures. From there, we'll order title and escrow. You know, we'll liaise with any other party. So if we need to coordinate insurance, home warranty, inspections, we deal with all those parties. What's important here is that when you're hiring a coordinator, a lot of times someone may do this and you don't know what's going on. With Transactly specifically, having our own proprietary technology, so our mm -hmm. clients can log into the application and see every single thing that we're doing along with our notes along the way. So, and that doesn't mean that agents need to use our application. They don't have to, you know, that's in fact why a lot come to us because they don't want to use their broker's back office system. So our coordinator ends up collecting all that, managing all the minutia in our application, and then entering that into the, the back office system. So, so in general, we cover all those things from all those facilitative things to then also what the broker is required to be turned in and whatever specific systems they use. i got to believe that most agents would really like to not have to do all of that themselves. <laughs> do you guys agree with me on the call? Uh, it seems like a lot of work. So just so I'm clear, so you wouldn't necessarily help if someone wanted to run a CMA as part of a listing presentation. You're, you're like, once they say, yes, I want to work with you, then from there out, you take, you, you manage the process. Is that a fair? That's, that's ex exactly right. Yeah. Everything that's, you know, basically dictated in a contract and buyer brokerage for compliance reasons, we're going to handle some of the things that we don't do are like you mentioned, you know, whether it's running a CMA, you know, sending out like a just listed postcard, um, or anything where it's negotiation based, like we're not going to get involved in negotiating the inspections and we don't deliver offers. Right. But once that's under contract, that's when we're off to the races. So um, got a couple questions for you that just came in. So one is, um, do you have a is there a do you have like a team of transaction coordinators across the country and then you sort of like job, they sort of timeshare? Does, does the agent sort of buy a timeshare on that transaction coordinator? Or do they have one person that's dedicated to them full time or does it depend on how many transactions that they have? Yeah, does they actually work? have, I mean, there will be people that are dedicated to them. So yeah, if it's, um, if it's a, an agent that's doing one or two transactions a month, they'll still just have one dedicated transaction coordinator. So we've got uh, roughly 80 transaction coordinators right now that are all nationwide. Most of them are working mm -hmm. in the markets that we're serving. Right. Sometimes they'll cross state lines. It just depends on what our clients are comfortable and what they prefer. Um, if it's a scenario with like that agent that has two, so that particular coordinator of ours may be handling five or six clients at a given time. Right. But then sometimes we'll have some larger teams that have, you know, 50 or 60, believe it or not, transactions in a given month. And so that one coordinator is dedicated just to that team and sometimes an assistant along with them. Now, here's the thing is. We don't just, you don't just, you know, say, here's your transaction coordinator. As a company, we believe in quality and delivering quality. So we also assign a, a success coach. And what that means is we help along that relationship. So if you, as you start scaling up, if there are other needs you need to have for transaction coordination, we can pull in other assistants. And that success coach works with our clients, right? To make sure that the TC is a right match, make sure they have other resources that are needed just generally to make sure that everything's going as smooth as possible. Gotcha. Now, Dennis asked a question. Are all of your employees U.S.-based? Yes. In North America? Everything, yep. All of our TCs are based here in the U.S. All our employees are as well. Perfect. Um, okay. Most, all of them also, re, we require them to have coordination experience or experience as an agent with transaction history in the last two years prior to joining us. Oh, great. So they're not just somebody that's a good administrator. There's are people that understand the unique nuances of how real estate works. That's really important. A absolutely critical. Yeah. And then we have a pretty thorough training program and some exams that they're required to pass before we start assigning clients. 
So we we tried the um, and this may be where your question came from, Dennis. We've tried the virtual assistant overseas thing where it's oh it's eight dollars an hour. One of those the general yeah. assistant people not not good. They didn't they yeah. didn't understand our business at all. And we were just they were probably in a big pool and there was just a, we were just one of many clients and that that's not what we're talking about here. This is a much yeah. more well defined group of people that understand specifically how to sell real estate, which is so much better. Yeah, um, so that, that I would say would be a good fit for like that general personal assistant role that, you know, overseas hire. This is highly specialized and we only charge if and when the transaction closes. So we align there, you know, it's oh, 350 okay. if and when deals close. Gotcha. So that's that's helpful, too, because one what Dennis mentioned earlier that he's looked at hiring an assistant, but it never really made sense for I, I don't know, I'm sure maybe the size of his business. But this is a pay as you go. So if you don't do a deal, there's no monthly ongoing not that I've got to pay regardless. It's only if I close a deal that that you actually the, the billing. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so we have some people that will come to us and I don't know, say. 80% of their deals, they'll use one of our coordinators and the other 20%, they may not, you know, maybe it's a close family friend or something. They just want to like walk and handhold every little detail. And so they can completely do that. It's entirely a la carte in terms of using us and not, it's not an exclusive deal. Perfect. So here's another question for you. Um, I know many MLSs offer either transaction desk or they offer zip forms. Um, and then many brokers, of course, uh, offer those kinds of products, plus maybe a dot loop or a sky slope or things like that. Um, how does this, how does Transactly work with those? So, so if my broker says, I've got to use sky slope because that's the tool that they've chosen, or my MLS suggests I use transaction desk because that's the solution they've chosen. How does Transactly or your, how do your team interface with those kinds of systems? Yeah, well, one or two ways. I mean, we prefer to have a, like a, a technical integration that helps us push that data. But again, I mentioned this earlier and I'll come back to it. So think of us as the front end. You know, we're collecting, organizing, ensuring that all those loose ends, everything that's involved for the, the transaction are, is tied up. And then we ensure that it's plugged into your broker's back office system, the back end. And so, as a client or as an agent, you know, it doesn't matter to me as long as it gets put into that system. And that's how we look at it is if we don't have a technical integration to do that automatically, then our coordinators are doing those things manually. Gotcha. So they could collect the information, put it in the Transactly system, which the agent has complete transparency. They can log in and see everything that's happening. And then yep. if, again, if the broker says, hey, if you want to get paid, you got to put it in Skyslope because some say that, right? Or whatever yep. system they've chosen then your, your um, coordinators actually do that work for the agent so they don't have to worry. They'll get their check because you're gonna put it in there for them. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the whole closing process and we don't get paid till it's done either. So <laughs> duly incentivized. Gotcha. Um, Dennis asked, is there a monthly minimum or is it if I don't do a deal, I don't pay anything? No, if you don't do a deal, you don't pay anything. There is no monthly minimum. So it is literally per transaction. You know, we have some other enterprise level plans once there's volume where you can make commitments for lower pricing and things like that, but just no obligation to use it at any given time. And it's only 350 if and when your transaction closes. So that's great. So it's really, um, you know, it's only tied when, I, when I, if, if I'm having a slow month, I'm not gonna have to pay you guys. That's awesome. Cindy yeah. uh, asked an actually interesting question. She said, are the TCs ever conducting activities that require a real estate license, such as how California defines those activities or any state that you operate in? No, no, we don't. So that's where I mentioned, like, we definitely don't touch anything that requires any type of negotiation or presenting offers or uh, all that, you know, I think those things are best left in the hands of the agent in general anyway. That's where you really kind of shine you know, as, as the leader here. Um, so no, we don't do any licensed activity. That said, a lot of our TCs are licensed because we want that experience coming in the door. So let's say that, um, and I'm in California as well, and Cindy may be going here too. There's a lot of, um, shall we call them interesting disclosures required here? And I'm sure many states have their own unique spin on things that are required. So do the transaction coordinators have to understand the uh, the scope and importance and relevance and meaning of each of the 
disclosures and documents that are required? Do they, do they have some legal understanding of them, even though they're not obviously doing the legal part of it? Most do, right? Because a lot of the coordinators in California that we've hired are either certified by, you know, California Association of Realtors or have a license so they understand it. And to your point, there's no place like California that, in terms of disclosures. They're definitely heavier there than anywhere else. We've seen a, um, a lot, a lot of markets. Um, so in terms of like understanding and advice, yeah, they have a general understanding of what's required in them, but mm -hmm. it's not our place to advise in terms of like, this should be done that way. Again, that's, and that's a gray line too, being an agent and a broker and a, you know, a managing broker in the past, that's a gray line as an agent we want to be cautious with as well. It's really left up to attorneys of interpretation. So mm -hmm. again, we try to keep things as facilitative as possible saying like, hey, this is blank, or this is missing, or this is due by this date. We ensure all those boxes are checked uh, along like timelines and requirements. But you're not gonna say, hey, this particular property needs this particular disclosure. That's up to the agent and, and the broker they work with to decide those kinds of things. Yeah, it's not our fiduciary capacity or duty to deliver that advice. That's where you toe the license line of, you know, also having a license, needing a license. So you still have to be a professional agent that understands the legal requirements in your state like you always would. This is more facilitating the completion of all that stuff once you've just defined what that package looks like. Yeah, and, yeah. You, yeah. you deliver as an agent, you want to deliver advice and delegate and then we receive that and do it. Perfect. OK, got it. That I uh, hope that answers your questions. And if you have another one, jump jump in there and ask it again. OK, so um, let, let's what is this one showing us here? So. Oops, I think some. Whoops. Um, yeah, you could probably skip that one. That's really yeah. kind of just a, you know, just I just wanted to show an image. Like we really have coordinators across the U.S. Currently, 80. We'll be up to 100 in a couple of months with the amount of demand that we've seen and interest from transaction coordinators wanting to join us. Um, so we've, I think we've done transactions and don't quote me on this somewhere close to 31 states so far. You know, it's just a matter of time I think before we have them all and. Uh, we'll be moving into Canada fairly shortly here as well. How many transactions approximately have your have your has your team completed? Would you say, or worked on? Um, I know we're close to exceeding three thousand, so somewhere along that line. Gotcha. Okay, good. So these are people that are they're professionals. They're doing this stuff all the time. That's yeah. Great. Now that's not a sum of our coordinators and their general experience. That's just as of being affiliated with Transactly. If we took the collection of all the TCs and their experience, it would be exponential. Gotcha. Okay, good. Well, this is really interesting. It's very, very different. Um, so again, it, just to remind us, so this is basic. It's based on the on, on the transaction. So if I do one transaction, it's three fifty. If I do two, it's seven hundred. If I do ten, it's thirty five hundred. It depends on how many. Is there any scale that happens if i get you know higher numbers of transactions per month or per year or something yeah well at that point we have like enterprise level pricing that's in the form of credits and um and that way you can buy down you know with bulk that pricing um it just allows some commitment on both ends so yeah that definitely does scale with the pricing um we have another there's one other so there's the listing coordination as well so that's 125 up front and that's for like you know, making sure the disclosures are in place specifically in California and completed and out there and available. Mm -hmm. um, we can schedule photography, anything else to get that listing on the market and then entering in the MLS. So there are two separate level, levels of pricing, right? So the 350 is regardless of whether it's listing or buy side. Um, and then there's only one other fee that we ever charge and it's upfront. We just charge a $95 onboarding fee. And okay. then it becomes a, it becomes a credit, so it's credited to whatever you use next, whether it's listing or transaction coordination. The reason we do it is because we want to take the time at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We really take the time to go through and understand the agent's processes, what you know systems they're using. We wrap our service around them, and so mm -hmm. there's some time dedication just to doing that. And so that's what that fee that ended up being a credit is used for is ensuring that we have everything set up so that as soon as an agent has a transaction, we're ready to go. Gotcha. Well, this is this is awesome. So if we want more information, I see the numbers on the screen. It's 888-271-7003 or TC at transactly.com. And um, is there information there about how to sign up and 
any training involved or anything like that? Um, I mean, in terms of training, we pretty much take care of most of it for you. So all, other than that, it's just the onboarding and it's more us learning about you. So you are essentially training us about your preferred processes, your preferred vendors so that we know what to do. But our job is to make this a lot easier on you. So there's no heavy training by any means. Uh, but yeah, to get started, I would say go to our website first and foremost. You could check us out at transactly.com and really walk through a lot of benefits and um, you can fill out a form there. One of our reps will get back to you pretty quickly or reach out to us by phone or email, whatever you prefer. Well, it's really interesting to think about this as you know, a lot of people on the call with us um, have been talking to, you know, asking questions about like, how do I do business differently? Um, where do, Where's the best use of my time? You know, what, what if I have eight hours in a day, what should I be spending my time on? And that they're looking at lots of technologies to help them think through that. This is an interesting thought about, well, maybe if I could offload this part of all of the, the transaction coordination, how many hours did you, how many hours did you say it saves about 19 hours? I would up to 16. So that's the highest we've seen and we've clocked it, but it varies from market to market and then deal type by deal type, you know, like an REO, a bank owned deal is going to take a lot longer on our sure. part, but the price is still the same. Um, so it just, it varies, but either way it's i would say it's some range in between 8 and 16 hours that we can save each transaction right so if you're doing multiple transactions a month you know that doesn't it doesn't take long for that to be a full week's worth of work and if you think about if i could offload this type of thing which i would guess again most people don't love to do plus it gives you time to do more marketing more outreach more social media all the other things that we've been talking about on the call it might be a really interesting thing for you guys to think about as a trade off so Interesting thought. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Brian. This has been really interesting. I'm, I'm just going to highlight what we've got coming up for the rest of the week. Um, tomorrow, yeah. we've got uh, Jason Cheverton. He is from Lone Wolf, ironically. I know you, you do some business with them. They're launching a new program, the Lone Wolf Marketplace, um, which is actually interesting for MLS folks and association folks, as well as agents and brokers to learn about, because there's they're going to be selling a lot of products through zip forms and through transaction desk so it'd be interesting to see what he's going to talk, talk to us about there and then friday we've got one of my absolute favorites rebecca jensen she's the ceo from mred which is the um, mls in chicago uh, they do some really really cool things like many of the other mls leaders that we've had on the show so she's going to show us five ways that mls's can help generate new listings new leads and new types of revenue opportunities so she's going to go through some really interesting products that may, may be available through your local MLS too that you haven't taken full advantage of yet. So that'll be a good one. So lots of fun people coming up as always. Um, and just wanted to remind everybody, if anybody would like to sign up automatically for Coffee Chats, um, just put your email either in the question box right now or send it to me at marilyn at retechnology.com and we'll get you registered. So you'll get to see them um, every day and you can decide if there's one you want to tune into. And then last, um, if you have not already done so, we'd love for you, for you to subscribe on our YouTube channel um, at RE Technology Inc. and type it exactly that way with no, no spaces in between and subscribe and then hit the little blue bell till it's, it's uh, red or, or solid, I should say. And then you'll get notifications for all of the recordings of the coffee chat. So if you missed one or if you want to share it with someone that it's an easy way for you to get them without having to go find them. And again, if you, um, if you are part of this, you may likely have an MLS subscription, a, a subscription to RE Technology offered through your MLS free. That's normally $200 a year, but they give that to you free. So thanks to all the MLS folks on the call today that do that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. If you do not have it, go to retechnology.com. Up in the top right-hand side, you'll see a little bar that says create account. Click on that and click on the monthly option and put in one of these codes and uh, you'll get a free three month subscription on, on our uh, you know to help you out with that because we want you to learn about all these great technologies we know that this this era of COVID has created so much virtual opportunity and frankly and i think you agree with this brian we don't see that a lot of that's not going to go away once we've learned how to do this in ways that are simpler and don't require us driving around or getting in meetings right we're, we're going to do more and more of this so re technology is a yes. great place more how to do that stuff right so um, with that, I want to thank you, Brian. This was great, very unique thing. And congratulations on being part of the REACH program. Again, if any of you are on the call, go to NAR REACH, just type that into your, um, into your Google you know, search and you'll find it. There's tons of really cool stuff in there. 
And NAR has this really great way of finding these unique but really, really meaningful tools that help agents be more effective at their business. So, and this is no example or, or no exception, I should say. It's awesome. So with that, we're going to tune out for today. Again, rem remember tomorrow we're going to talk about the Lone Wolf Marketplace. On Friday, some other great pieces of advice about how to use the MLS to get all kinds of great uh, benefits and great sales opportunities for yourself. And everyone have a great day. I hope this was helpful. And um, Go sell, go make it happen. Thank you so much, have a great day. Thanks.